Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking to an amazing guest who's going to share his journey with bipolar, how it has affected his life, you know, the good, the hard, and everything in between. Welcome to the show, Andrew. It's so good to have you here. Just let the people know who you are for those that do not know you. What can we learn about you today? Thank you very much, uh, Lisa, for having me on the show. I'm very delighted yeah. uh, to be here to have a conversation with you about uh, my journey with the Polar Disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Singuzi, uh, Lisa, Andrew. And, uh, I am an engineer, civil engineer by training and by practice. I am a businessman. I am a husband to one wife all the time. Amen. And uh, I am a father to four wonderful girls. That means I have many dogs. I actually have six dogs. <laughs> we have to chase the people who are <laughs> some good words coming in. Oh, okay. Yeah, then um, I am also a leader in church. The purposes of this uh, discussion. I'm an author as well, yeah. and most importantly, I'm a Christian. Wow, yes. amazing! So that's why I'm Lisa. Ah, so good to have you here. So we know lots of people, including myself. You know, um, do not understand clearly the issues with mental health. You know, we are still trying to understand what is this all about. And I'm glad we're here to just open our eyes on on this subject matter. So. For those that do not know, uh, you have bipolar. Uh, maybe just tell us what that is, and then we can get into the real gist. Mm. All right. Uh, I think in, in simple terms, uh, bipolar is a, a mental health challenge mm. that uh, messes up with the moods of the person who's suffering from it. Mm. Uh, so by or by two, mm. so you can swing uh, on the upper end to extreme sadness, extreme mm. depression, when you trigger in that direction. And then at other times in other seasons, you can swing to very high euphoric phases, you're mm. very excited, brilliant ideas. And so you swing, the, the emotions, the moods are in, in, in between that spectrum. So uh, if it is not well managed, it has a, a, a capacity to impair the way you relate with people, the way you run your life in society. So in simple terms, that's my point. Okay. All right. So maybe let's go back a bit. You know, when did this all start? The journey, the polar, or when did you realize something was not right? Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. I think I have to backtrack a little bit backwards. Yeah. Uh, because um, I think different people, uh, the triggers are different. Yeah. Uh, but for me, uh, the trigger was. Uh, Lack of harmony with dysfunctional families and um, relationships with my parents. Yeah, so I, I, I grew up uh, in Botanica area. Not in the street, but in the area, near that area. And you see, well, you see where the Royal Palms is right now, mm -hmm. it's and the well built, and those places used to be empty fields where we used to play football with guys from Kishina, Shiro, Kikasa, Shiro. Those areas, uh, and uh, I grew up there, and you know, they seemed like a bit of a stable environment until my dad is, is now retired, but was a businessman uh, traveling all over the world before this craze of China came about. Uh, and so that time was stable. But then he got an idea to start dealing with coffee. There was a period in the early 90s, mid 90s. Where I think the things in the coffee in Brazil was hit by snow or something, and you got the kind of market, good target market for the coffee. So, got that idea, and that's what problems began. So, we have to move to Shen and now leave us. So, now this couple is starting to have a to see blood, no money here and there. And I didn't know that these things were living a mark on me. Uh, you see, Normally, someone does not get up one day and hang the 
themselves on a tree yeah. or, or jump uh, over in the season of being. No, it comes slowly, it comes slowly, it comes slowly. I didn't know it was hitting me in those different ways. The thing is, we have five children, but out of the five, I'm the only one who got a I think because of the genetic predisposition and other things later that I go to learn. But so, how does the bipolar come? Now, we are strong, struggling with a mother to grow up and to make sure we go to school. And um, I mean, in university, we have got a government sponsorship to go and civil engineering. How mm -hmm. my life has begun, you know, yeah. excited. So, I get a call. Second semester uh, first year, and I think it was a ninety or something. She tells me, you know what? Your mother has left. Mm. See, mm. now for some reason I couldn't reconcile myself with, mm. with that. I'm saying we oh, are at Makerere. The money is closed. We're almost we're we're almost getting the money. We have been struggling to come to study. Yeah. Where is she going? She's gone to back to her village. There's no one there. Her parents have passed on. Mm -hmm. So that hit me so much. I, I went on the on the poles of Mumba, the gate of Mumba pole. I was in the Mumba. Me and that Kumun symbol, that symbol, that symbol of the building. I wept. I didn't care who was looking at me. You didn't care about my money. My what? Box was just closed there. I didn't care. So I went to the room. I was on a block. So later, in the events that happened later, the doctor diagnosed it as bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. and I began my journey. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's, that's really interesting because it's so important for parents out there to know that the things we do actually affect our children. Like when you talk about family uh, background and the trauma, etc. In that moment, you know, sometimes as parents, you make decisions just to like. It's affecting you only, but looking at you and saying that family trauma actually affected you. For me, it's just a wake up call as a parent like, watch out or be wiser or just <coughs> think through the decisions that they're making. Okay, so now they've diagnosed you that you have bipolar. How was that living with bipolar? Like, your journey, did it affect your work? And for me, I'm really curious when it comes to building relationships around you. Yeah. Walk us through that. You know, I was reading, <laughs> I think I was watching somewhere where you're talking about your journey. I didn't want to go too deep because I wanted to hear it firsthand. I was like, eh. you know, you talked about um, situations where you found yourself in funny situations. You know, can you tell us more about that? Well, it's a huge, huge uh, story to tell. Yeah. And I'll keep it. Yeah. But you see, when, when first of all, let me first address the issue of living with a I'll tell you, um, I've been in secondary school in Sudi for six years. So we stop talking about cream. Cream de la cream. That's what they used to tell us. You're, you're in the school. <laughs> and uh, I'd actually excelled and, and, and uh, I've become the best in the country at, at, uh, at my O levels. And, and now I'm in a government sponsorship. Mm -hmm. But you see, when the condition hits, I could barely understand anything. You know what that does to a young man? In the latter years, when I when I go when I go to do retakes, I find kids who used to idolize me and yeah, a guy, you know, and now you're doing retakes. It was like walking to the electric chair, literally to burn. Yeah, but I remember campus because it was not a good time for me. I can tell you honestly. Uh, when the condition was diagnosed, I, I started taking medication. Heavy stuff, heavy doses, and you know, with the heavy doses, you're zoned out almost all the time, you're sleeping most of the time, and so you cannot uh, comprehend or touch base with what's happening at campus. So, guys, are happening, my prime time, my what? You blink. I remember I used to sleep, and guys are going to lecture rooms at seven, showering, the sleep is the heaviest at that time. Yeah. So I wake up at 11, and uh, at 11, and then that's when I'm now going slowly, shower slowly, and then there was Safi. Safi, remember Safi? Yeah. And then I used to take that drink, and then go to the 
time when you get to the lecture theater, you'll sign for like 30 minutes. You try to sleep in again. Because it tough sometimes. In fact, I asked myself what was calling me towards the finish line, and I can only say it was called in retrospect. That was the time I passed. Eventually, I finished a degree after my colleagues had already finished, and some time later. But then I get into, into um, the workspace, and it's a different ball game altogether also in the workspace and other spaces. Okay, so when you um, hospitalized, you have your personal what happens? Do you get hospitalized? Are you taken to Tamika? You know, how does that really work? Um, okay. Now, I'll, I'll relate to you the two most intense uh, moments, the high and the low, then now, uh, that the hospitalization will come in along the way. Now, because of that too much falling from grace to, to grass. I remember this particular time we had done a, a, a survey, a post unit, and Bambia was trying, was trying to understand a few right, as in a bowling machine, not in my head. So I give it my best. The next semester, I go to the notice board, and it's another we take. And I say, God, why have you abandoned me? Why? So I walked back to my room. I was at St. Francis that time talking to God to give us and she was silent. I walked down to the room back and I think I locked myself in a room for a week or something. And then I almost committed suicide. Yeah. To take my hand, I said, what's the use now? You know. So that was one of my lowest. Then later when I got stuck with the medication and I got a bit better, I said, but I'm a Christian. And Jesus heals. So if Jesus heals, I am the healed of the Lord. You get. So then I say I no longer take medication. I put off the medication. It wasn't even a month. I was crazy. All ideas in my head, everything was running around. I actually went to state house. The guys hammered me. Those guys are red top is not a joke. <laughs> I mean, they're protecting the big man. So, so they took me very quickly to CPS below, down there, you know, CPS just below. And when I got there, see, these guys are not, I told the, the kingpin there, you know, you man, I am going to make you guys escape. The guy slapped me, and I went, I fell on the floor, and I started weeping. I said, oh, God, why don't people understand me? I want to sort the economy. Huh? They are not understand. I'm trying to help these guys escape. Later, my family discovered that I'd been taken to CPS, and uh, outside the CPS hosp um, the prison thing, I found the Butabika Hospital van, and I was taken to Butabika Hospital for rehabilitation. And so that's how I ended up in Butabika. I did, uh, I, think, I don't remember the period, I think a month or so, and eventually, because of the trauma of being in that place and because of maybe my cognitive abilities coming back because of the medication, I said, I want to be well. Mm. You see, so that's how I started adhering to the medic heavy, heavy medication. Yeah. I started adhering to it, and slowly by slowly, my, my, my cognitive abilities came back. One thing that viewers need to know is that usually uh, mental health challenges, it's, it's, a, it's a chemical imbalance in the brain really mm -hmm. so within the chemicals are well well uh, oriented and aligned you can speak well i can see you and know that you are the one but when something is amiss yeah. then the medicine helps rebalance back mm -hmm. the chemicals yeah so when i got that and said okay this medicine is not my enemy yeah. it will help me rebalance eh? i said i'll take these apples yeah. i call them apples mm -hmm. for my health mm -hmm. and that's how slowly by slowly I started gaining back my abilities to, to read, to write. I'd lost, man, I couldn't write, I couldn't. My hand was always shaking like this, I couldn't. So uh, the some things I'd no longer take for granted. Yeah, especially after I've been down, down, down the hill, yeah. yes. Oh my God, mm -hmm. that's eye-opening. So when you talk about, I don't know, at this point, um, were you still on campus at that point, or you had already, you said you had worked already. No, 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 I was actually on campus the last mm -hmm. semester. Mm -hmm. So I lost a year. And then I graduated two years after my friends, mm -hmm. the class that I was in, uh, graduated. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so when you talk about um, the condition, 
medication and now you're taking medication, does it affect your relationship, for example, now you're married, you have children, how does that pan out in a day-to-day -day setting? Mm -hmm. And, you know, do you first tell your wife now, this is, uh, I'm dealing right now, so maybe, you know, like, how, how does that happen? <laughs> Uh, one thing I have to say is that uh, I've chosen, we have chosen as a couple, I've chosen as an individual to look at myself as a normal, mm. and indeed I'm normal, I'm on the list, you, you see my show. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm normal, mm. because uh, by the way, as you realize, uh, the, the issues that all of us face in families are not akin to different families, eh? Yeah. We all go through the same issues. You have no fees sometimes, you have no food sometimes, Yaka has complained. You see, it's the same, dealing with the same pressures. Now, the key here is to be able to be aware of yourself. And that one I got to learn early. So you're aware, you know your stressors. You know I don't work well with stress, you know I don't work well with grief, you know I don't work well with the different things that are your triggers. You avoid you avoid those, mm. those, those things that uh, tick you off. Eh? So when you're aware of yourself, so you can be aware and say, ah oh, man, I had a very bad day at, at, at work, give me some time to sleep. Yeah. Recalibrate, mm. the next morning you're a better person. But that happens for every one of us, yeah. actually, yeah. if you look at it. Eh? So, so I think that's how I've managed to cope. I'm extremely normal, just like any other person, but I'm aware of the succumbs. I'm aware of whatever limitation I have, and I work around the circumstances around me mm. to make sure it works. Mm. That life works, marriage works, mm. parenting works, work yeah. works. Mm. Yeah, I know the different spheres that I serve in. Okay. Yes. So you've talked about you know having a relationship with God, mm. you know. And we know mm. many people sometimes when you're getting to these challenges, you'd say you almost you know, committed suicide, you know, it felt like maybe mm. suicide. How was your relationship like with God and how has it helped you? to kind of work through this situation? Uh, it's a tough question. <laughs> but easy as well. Eh? I think I realized early that I needed the Lord on my side. Yeah. There are some spaces where medication will not reach. There are some spaces where your spouse cannot reach. Yeah and where the children or your best, best friends cannot reach. Mm. Where you're in your own closet and you tell God, man, I'm, I'm, I'm sinking under the weight of this. Hold me, mm. hold me. So I realized that, I realized that uh, a bit early. But you see, when you're going through, for example, a depression, you feel abandoned, you feel, you feel like, man, you've, you've left me out again like this. Mm. Eh? So these are conversations I used to have with God. So I, 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 at one point, that time when I was seeking healing, he said, no, you have to get healing, you've got to get healing. Then I asked, later I asked myself, what is healing? What is healing in the essence of the thing? Yeah. Because healed people or normal people do this. They have families, they have a family. They have children, they have children. They keep jobs, they have jobs. So what is healing in its essence? So if you clamor too much for ethereal, you may not actually get it. So what, what, what I realized is that, and what comforted me a lot was that portion of scripture where the Lord healed the people who are blind, eh? and the, the guys, blind guys, the um, lepers, and only one came back to visit. Yeah. But the Bible says, as they went, they are being healed. So you never know. At a point, one kilometer, the guy says, hey, my fingers are back. Oh, praise the Lord. And someone moves and says, hey, my skin is clear. So I'm on that journey. I don't know where the finish line is. Yeah. But as I get refined, as I go on, I believe the Lord has healed me. I believe I'm, I'm living a normal and full life. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to discount the fact that I had questions. Yeah. I had questions. I would ask, why? Why me? Why me? You know, I'm, 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 I'm serving. I mean, I was in campus ministry. That's Everything around me was revolving around God. And I'm saying, why me? I've not messed up in any way. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not doing ladies. What's up? I'm on the right path. Hey, I'm on the right path. Why, why have you taken a vacation on me? Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, Lisa. He was silent. You see, eh? he was silent. And then later I got to realize, when, when, when the book came out, 
and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking at international conferences and pe people are hanging on every word that's coming out of my mouth. I look back and flash and said, man, I was out and out, naked and flat out on the floors of Butabeka Hospital. But God knew. Yeah. He knew that this experience will help me encourage someone. You see, when the Bible says in, uh, I mean, all things work together for good, yeah. for all that are, uh, all the, those who are called uh, the purposes of God, he knew everything, everything works out for good. So if you're out there and you have a situation, maybe you're depressed and, or you're manic or you have any circumstance and you're trusting in God, hang in, hang in there because you never know what you will make out of this journey that you're, you're having. Eh? And so for me, that's how my journey has been with God. But I found him to be faithful at the end of the day. He, I found him to be faithful. I mean, he stores what the locusts have eaten. The Bible says that, you know. And he's made great places for us. I mean, rivers in deserts. Eh? He's done that for me. I've seen him. So he's a faithful God. Yeah, that's yes. amazing. And I know you've touched a bit about the book. Before we even jump into the book, you know, I'm just imagining mm. you're feeling lost, you're feeling cast down, you're feeling like, eh, why me and all these things? You know now you have uh, this uh, bipolar. What is, how are people receiving it? Your friends, your family, you have a support system. A guy is now shining you and saying, ah, ha, what if I get it? You know people can have all those things. <laughs> you know? This yeah. <clears throat> I think, well, I, 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 thankfully I did. Mm. Thankfully I did. And, and the support system came in many ways. First, uh, my family, my, my, my dad, my mom, they tried to work through their issues. They live in it's a civil relationship. They're now in their olden ages. And my dad would always check, are you taking medication? Um, are you taking garlic? Are you taking, you know, to flush out these chemicals out of your system? So the, the family was actually there, the, my family, the one I grew up in. Mm. Then I had a set, and this is very, very important. Do not isolate yourself if you have some circumstances. Like, don't try to get a community of people who will understand you. Then I had friends, guys, but chiga boys. Mm. Mm. Ah, but chiga are very loyal, by the way. Mm. I am a chiga. Hey, you're a chiga. <laughs> I didn't know. Now, those guys were with me all the way. You know when you want to vent? Uh, you want to talk a little bit about a circumstance that is hitting you so hard you go yeah. The guys would listen one at a time and wow. give you good advice But then most importantly, I've got support from my wife mm -hmm. she's, she's my number one cheerleader wow. uh, And she has seen the good and the bad uh, in, in been married 13 years wow. and um, She's the primary support that I have and then the kids mm -hmm. the kids support you know, secondarily, if I can put it like that, yeah. because you know you have a, you have first of all you have people who are entirely dependent on you, mm. so you've got to do your best to be as normal as possible, mm. so you don't you avoid situations that will trigger you up for the sake of the kids, mm. and then they are good girls, vibrant girls, keep you on the toes, good questions, they want games to play, so you find they, 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 um, keep, um, you they keep you alive. Yeah. That's very true. Mm -hmm. So, another in fact, these days I, want, I love going back home a bit early because you know it's going to be a ball of happiness yeah. when you get home. Mm -hmm. And so, the support system is extremely important. Yeah. It's in, so, I've been fortunate mm -hmm. uh, to have those, those uh, types people of people around, people. around me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you told us that you're an author. Maybe you can tell us more about the book, um, this condition, and everything you've gone through mm -hmm. inspired you. Inspired you <laughs> to write this book. Tell us more about it and how you think it can help someone mm. else. Now, uh, incidentally, I'm going to tell you how the book came to be, mm. but incidentally, I, I wrote the book if, first and foremost for people who are going through mental health challenges. That's, that was a thought. Mm. But I can tell you, Lisa, people in the corporate world, people in boardrooms, mm are clamoring for the book. I print copies and they run out. I print and they run out because people have seen that you can actually, people have challenges. Yeah. People have challenges that are not talked about, especially yeah, the men. Yeah. Eh? You ask and someone says, I am okay. I'm good. Men don't want to share. They don't talk. Men don't talk. What are you talking about? Be strong. <laughs> yeah, be strong. Man up. You know, those kinds of things. So, but they find a bit of, they recognize themselves in the pages of this book. Yeah. And so, I think I wrote both for such 
and for people in the I think later now I realize for the entire community around Uganda and around the world but this is how the book came to be so I had last gotten a mental breakdown in 2008 so I've re-established myself again in the society I've got a family we are moving nothing is things are good COVID comes now COVID comes and you know it was a time of re um, rethinking our lives you're at home most of the time and guys uh, marriages are falling apart people are fighting people are depressed and you're looking for what you can do to contribute it's actually not inherent in me but I start getting feeling in my heart I believe it was the unction of the Holy Spirit to write yeah. say write your story. your story write your story and I said no God, you've come back to break my heart again. You want me to <laughs> hey. those ah. <laughs> Don't even go there. Can never be me. No, no, can never, never be me. So I said, I cannot. I cannot. I said, you send me to Afghanistan, I'll preach the gospel there. I that part of my life, I cannot relieve it because it was tough. hidden. Those were tough things. It's tough, tough things. So, but you see, it's a choice. You either skip going to the prayer closet or abandon praying altogether. Yeah. Yeah, you see, so every time I would go, I would say, but they need me. I've helped you. You tell them that eh, they can be encouraged. I kept feeling that in my heart. So I said, okay, okay, okay. I write. Yeah. Let me tell you, Lisa, writing this book was the most painful mm. thing of my life so far. What was painful about it? Mama, you know, I had to dig back dig back i remember all those fights with my parents the pain that was there you remember every moment the shame going to do those retakes you know the whispers everyone writing you or people saying what you remember there were tears on every script i wrote you know and so i but when i finished writing it it was sort of like therapeutic Everything yeah. there. Then now the book, it, it was in manuscript phase, and now my relatives are saying, You cannot release this book. How? You're putting out our oh, secrets. I talked through with my wife, and she said, You have my blessing. Let's see. That's hit. the most important one. Once yeah. that one is there. Once that, that one is there, there was no one yeah, else. Yeah, the rest, there. please. <laughs> and, and so the book came out, and within six months, it was winning awards internationally. Wow. And it, I mean, the Lord has done extremely good with, mm. with the book. It's um, it's a good book. Yeah, that's what I can say. Mm. And I, it, it tells. I've really talked very little about the different circumstances uh, uh, surrounding uh, the condition that I've lived with, but the book explains a bit more, mm. and it gives hope. Most important, people hope. want hope. Yeah, I, I realized actually later. I was asking why are people loving the book. Why, why, why is it? And I realized that people resonate with authenticity mm. and they resonate with the need for hope. Mm. Yeah. So mm. that, that's how the book has mm. been. Amazing. So in there, please, if you want the full gist of everything that happened and how Andrew overcame ETC, please, where can they get a copy meanwhile? Uh, all bookshops. Aristoc, Bookpoint, Bugolovi. <laughs> A Uganda bookshop, Leo. Mukono bookshop. Wow, mm. amazing. Okay, the so most, I think that for me, what what drives me now is getting the book in as many hands, and not yeah. because I wrote it, and because the story is me. I know myself. Yeah. I know how weak I am. I know how vulnerable I am. It's the feedback. Yeah, it's the, the feedback getting... I get. Man, this thing has helped me. This thing has realigned me. This thing. And so I want as many people who are in need mm. to be able to, to get the story and read it and, mm. and, and get it defined. Yeah. Yes. So what key things would you tell, one, people who are struggling through um, depression or mental illness, but then also those who are outside and, you know, the one saying, mm, 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 it's not real, mental, mm. uh, uh, just, just to risk. No, you're over-exaggerating, you know, because sometimes mental health has become now it's a thing these days hey. and everyone i'm depressed i'm depressed i'm depressed mm -hmm. so what advice would you give to the two categories of people uh maybe i hold a thought there about my work maybe you can ask a little bit later about my work mm. but um i think uh when when uh someone tells you they are depressed or someone tells you have lost interest in life mm -hmm. don't brush them off mm. hey, don't but the, the the blueprint really is mental, mental illnesses in the traditional form 
were normally genetic predispositions. Yeah. What do I mean? You know, there's a family, they have got, they've got someone who's committed suicide there, they have someone who's always depressed, they have someone who's mm. schizophrenic. And so if your teenage, because these things normally hit towards the end of teenage years, if your teenage boy is telling you, man, I'm not understanding myself, I'm not what, yeah. what, what, and you know that there were some things in the, some the family. pockets, mm. please pay attention. Yeah, lot. We've lost guys, we've lost young, brilliant boys mm. who have taken overdoses of medicine, drugs, who have, because the family didn't understand them. Man up, no, no, we no. no. Please listen yeah. and, and, and respond. Mm. But then also I realize that stress is part of life. Hmm? Stress is part of life. Uh, being low is part of life. I think if the low phase is going on for maybe two weeks or more, that's when you should have a cause to you know, seek Reach medical out. attention. Yeah. But we get depressed. You get a bad mark for an exam, you, you get a bit bad. low. Yeah. It's normal. It's part of life. You shouldn't yeah. medicate or, or call for pity or something like that. Yeah. So what you do, use normal coping mechanisms. Eat right, exercise, run, you know, do these things that will help you be able to re re reinitiate yourself back into the normal way of life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So depression is real. It is a bad, bad feeling. Yeah. You feel the thing, the pit in the stomach is like, it's bad. Yeah. So it's real. So please don't, don't downplay, yeah. don't brush it off. But then also you need to strike a balance to know that life has cares. People die. Mm. You know? uh, people lose jobs. It's part of life. So just learn how to cope, cope. Uh, with the different circumstances that you're going in. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so Andrew, you know, as you're living with this and you, I think you're thriving in this, how have you managed to cope, you know, even at work? Someone may be out there thinking, ah, but this guy, is he really making it? Like, how is life? Are you thriving? I, I can tell you, and this I want to encourage, eh? mm. I want to encourage guys out there when if you are in the middle or in the midst of the darkest darkness in your life eh, yeah. and you feel like there's no hope, you feel like uh, the whole world is crumbling on you, I can tell you there's hope. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, because uh, by the time my guys finished, I had retakes, Lisa. Retakes, best in the country. And now you have retakes. It was, you, it was, it was a polar opposite, yeah. diametric opposite. Mm. But you see, with the help of God, I determined that I was going to make it mm. no matter what. Mm. So I did the first degree. I said I would never go back to Kampala, to, to, what? to Makerere. Mm. I did the first master's degree. I finished it. Did the second master's degree. Finished it. Did the third master's degree. Finished it. And I realized if I'm going to hit this thing of stress and deadlines, and I need to equip myself yeah. to be skilled so that I can do my work excellently yeah so i've done i've done uh, over i mean over 20 diplomas international i've been i've been in many spaces i'm wow. always doing something to improve myself and you're passing i pass first class all, all the things first hey, class wow. I'm kama, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you can with the help of god yeah. rewrite your story so don't give up don't if work has failed you're not getting jobs here and there Keeping use this time. They are very. They are on the internet. There are free MOOCs. These courses that are free. Coursera is there. Linda.com yeah. is there. Get even if the certificates certificates are not verified. Keep 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 yeah. keep yourself skilling up. And so when you skill up and you go into a workspace, they will know. Yeah. This one has an extra thing that they can add onto the team. Mm. And then you never know, you'll be able to be reunited back into society. But then also what I wanted to say is wait. Mm -hmm. There is there's beauty in waiting. Okay, when you're waiting, you don't you don't you don't see, you don't see it. it. Like, ah, when is it ending? When the Bible says those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll fly on wings like eagles, they walk not to go tired, run and not faint. So the waiting season is a tough one. But you see, you can wait on this. If someone say, tells you, Lisa, I'm going to send you 50K, you will be able to wait faithfully or with hope if you know the integrity of that person. Because yeah. you know, no, no, Lazima, Lazima, John will send that money. Yeah. Uh, even if it's three o'clock when you said 10, it will come. I know he'll come. So build your relationship with God to know that you trust Him good enough to know that even if, he's, if I'm in the wait, 
It's going to come through. He will say what he says. It's going to come through. He says what he says he will do. And I love, I love that Proverbs uh, 3, 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord yeah. with all your heart. Yeah. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. Yeah. And, and so that's what I saw. Trust. Trust, trust. And you know, trust gives you an element of hope. Yeah. yeah so you'll be hopeful. And today I've not gotten what to eat, but tomorrow, mm. but tomorrow. And if you linger enough around the presence of God, ah, in his presence there's fullness of joy. Mm. Mm. Yes, Amazing. Indeed. Let me tell you my key things mm. yeah, from this discussion. One, <laughs> mental health is real. It's real. Mm. Mm. It's real, guys. Let's not shun it. Let's not, you know, it's real. So be aware and alert. Two, Parents, again also, you know, be aware of, you know, what's happening to my child. Sometimes we as parents put so much pressure. Mm. Imagine a child is struggling mm. and you're like, no, you pass. Maybe you're not. It can just add on the stress. Mm. You know, look out for your people mm. and community. Build a mm. community around you so that, you know, guys mm. can care and see you through that time. I think for me that has been key. Mm. Faith in God. Mm. You know, sometimes, you know, when we are sick, some people, some people say, you mean you don't have enough faith? Mm. Mm? You're not praying enough, that's mm. why you're depressed. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, that kind of thing is tough. So for mm. me, those have been my key points and that there is hope. Mm. Whatever you're going through, mm. mentally, because someone told me that, you know how we get a headache? or your leg is paining, mm. that's the body. Mm. The mind can also get sick. sick. And that's what mm. you've been talking about of chemical imbalances. imbalances. I think the, 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 the other parts of the body are a bit unique. Mm. Hmm? The mind is a bit complex because it will mess up with your cognitive abilities, your mm. ability to make sound judgments. Mm. So, for example, I'll give you an example. One of the points when I'd broken up, broken down, is that I went and got my brother's ATM. I tricked him in telling me the, the code. The code. Hey. Lisa, I went running and swiped all his money. All? All of his money. And now, those, that, those days the limit was about five million. I don't know what the limit is now. Mm. And then, I don't even know where that money went. Where did you go? I don't know, but, but you see, the, the thing is that when, when you're in a high phase, eh, then, this is about 2007, eh, before I was hospitalized in Butabika, mm. you know, everything is possible. So you can reach, and I'll just give out the money. I remember I went to that, to shop right, bought yogurt, bought what? Imagine. To drive you, get put, put fuel in, in a special hire, mm. and you go up to Lugazi. When you reach there, you ask, hey, what Where did I you? come to do? Put fuel and come back. You see, so the brain is a bit complicated. Yeah. That's why I think the society places a big heart. And maybe we should be sorry for them as well. Okay, them, the normal ones. Yeah. You, the normal yeah. ones. <laughs> uh, quote, unquote. You see, eh? Yeah. So, so that's why it is important when you notice these things coming up in, in your person or your relative or your friend, seek help. And there is help. Yeah. There's help almost everywhere these days. Mm. And, and the situation when grabbed in, in, in good time, mm you can arrest mm. what would have gone wrong. Yeah. Yes. But these, these conversations are good because it creates awareness. Exactly. So the more people know, the more they are empathetic, mm. the more they are alert, mm. the more they can help a friend. Yes. You know, because yeah, and also, and also uh, apparently this is very, what you're doing is ex extremely excellent because uh, awareness and knowledge, knowledge that man, I had a guy, a young university, mm. he has just joined, joined university, somewhere in Chira, and uh, he started manifesting uh, the, the, the so symptoms of, of a mental breakdown. Yeah. And you know, the parents were perturbed. They had not seen something like this. So they called in the village. Hey, hey, the aunties came and said, Oh, Neda, Neda, Neda. Oh, no, man, I ate again. He was a wakazi mufuweko. You know? Go he to needs, the they go to the village and the, the, eh, the heirs of the relatives, you know? Blow, blow. What? They got the guy. Yeah. They took the guy to a grave, graveyard, Kulimbo, oh and they tied God. him here for the whole night. Oh my God. For the whole night. You can imagine, the guy is already confused. Oh, what is happening? Mm. Trauma. In the morning, he was worse. He was worse off than he was when he was being taken. Yeah. So, awareness information to know that. Well, there are some cases where witchcraft is also real, by the way. It's very, very real. You need to know that witchcraft is real. Yeah. Uh, so there are, there are those cases that are spiritual related. Yeah. 
and, and they have to be handled in that particular docket. Yeah. But in most instances, when you look hard enough, you yeah. realize that uh, you can have help for these circumstances. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing, especially men. Men talk, men come out, at least tell your boy, someone you know who can get you through because they're the, they're the ones who don't talk because you find ladies always sharing, sharing. so at least you, you get co relief or you know your friend's like, mm -mm, something is not mm. right, you know? So thank you so much for mm. creating awareness. Any last things you want to tell us that you've not maybe mentioned? Uh, I think maybe, maybe two or so. Mm. Uh, for the men, for the men, mm. three things you remind me. Yeah, the three. first one okay. is for the men. I think uh, let's try to build relationships that are authentic. Mm. Mm. Relationships that are not shallow. Eh? You know, relationships. There are these shallow relationships that you're always talking about. A bot land here. You in like in a competing, competing <laughs> way. Of, um, uh, this guy who scored. He's the best player. Those things are good mm. because they make us the men that we are. But in them, in the array of people that you have around that have, get one or two friends who are empathetic enough to, to your being as a person, and talk deep, talk deep things. Eh? And I know men can actually talk because I talk to many men because of the book. People yeah. seek me out and we have these intimate conversations. See, I was crying, in, 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 crying because of the circumstances that, that have been in their lives. So, so talk. But you can only talk when you trust. It's difficult for us to trust. Yeah. Because you say, for now, I'm going to make myself naked before this guy. Where is he going to take this information? He'll look at me less of a man. No, talk. Just try to talk. You don't have to tell it to everyone. Then it's also, men, it's okay to cry. But you don't cry in public yeah, for everyone no, to no. emasculate, you know. You go lock yourself in the bathroom and box finish. the walls, finish your, it's okay, tears release yeah. toxins that are in the system. You finish what your face, wash your face and come and say, man, I'm the CEO of this company, <laughs> you see. Right. Eh? Yeah. Uh, so, so it's important for men to actually release, talk. Mm. And it's, uh, the era is different, yeah. especially now. Those days men were tough, they were the providers, traditionally set up in that way, but now, the woman is equally emancipated. You see, eh? you can buy a car, she can buy it. You want to buy land, she can also buy it. Yeah. Buy, the, buy the land. Mm -hmm. If you will say we build apartments, she can also build apartments. So what value are you adding mm -hmm. to her? You see, eh? so get good friends and, and exert yourselves, do meaningful work and have noble values yeah. that, uh, that build up the families that you're raising. Mm -hmm. The other thing yeah. is now for the people who are in the challenges, who are, who are mentally challenged, eh? mm. or who are depressed or whatever. Please be cooperative, <laughs> yeah? yeah? So if your friends have, to, if your relatives have said, you know what, take the medicine. Medicine is not an enemy. It, let me tell you, and I'm saying this uh, with, with, um, with a heart of kindness, because you can't get drug fatigue. Yeah. You get uh, tired, you, tired every time taking drugs, if I've forgotten, I'm done. So you get fatigued mm. in the system because of drugs. So I'm not underplaying the, the issue of drugs, but yeah. try to be cooperative. Take the medicine if they tell you to take this and the other. Be cooperative. If they tell you rest, rest. And then the other thing is actually I realize that the most important uh, cure, not cure, relief for the people who are, who are mentally challenged, if I can put it like that, is sleep. Because mm. remember, the brain is what has the problem. So rest. So rest. Be jealous with your sleep. Yeah. Guard it. If someone is telling you to do a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no. You see, eh? go and have some rest, reasonable rest consistently. Yeah. You find that your body reconstructs, and even if you're taking medicine, the medicine is realigned eh? to actually even work better. Mm. Then the last ones are the, the caretakers, the people who are looking after are those people who have challenges. One, continue with the compassion. Yeah. Mama, we can be difficult. <laughs> they are telling you what to do, you, you don't want. No. <laughs> you get it. So be compassionate and have hope that things will happen. But most importantly, have community. Yeah. Have church groups you go to. Mm. Have ladies, if you're a lady caretaker, have ladies you talk about these issues with. Have support, community support. And that will uh, help you cope as you deal with your person who has a challenge. But above all, Jesus. God. Jesus, Jesus, it's Jesus. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way I would be here if yeah. it wasn't for Jesus. Mm. When I look back then and now, yeah. 
It has only been the faithfulness of God. Beautiful. Is there a snippet you want to read for us from that kabuk? Yeah, this kabuk here, I had. Something. It's like a summary, a summary of the of the. There are many, there are many yeah. good things, right? But I think the summary of the book here is the story of this book is there for one of triumph, one of hope, and one of healthy relationships along the journey that I'm still taking. Triumph, because despite current statistics of mental of the mentally ill, I am living a balanced and fulfilling life. Yeah. Hope, because I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds the key to my future, and I live each day that comes purposefully. As for relationships and social support, there is no better warmth in living life with other living and caring people. Yeah. I have found support from all my key relationships, these relationships opened my eyes to a God of love. Mm. They showed me Jesus. Mm. My relationship with this God of love showed me what it meant to be human. Yeah. Guys, love is powerful, and that's who God is. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Guys, I think that has been amazing. My name is Lisa Kosima, and honestly, I'm here to inspire. Moms, excitement is building up as we prepare for Moms Gather 2024. If you missed last year, please don't make the same mistake. Yeah, we are going to just celebrate one another, learn how to walk in purpose on this mom journey. If you want to be a mom and more than a mom, then Moms Gather 2024 is for you. There will be incredible speakers, fun, food, and a good time it will be happening on 11th may at kampala serena hotel so please come it's closer to mother's day so we are going to enjoy and pat ourselves on the back because we are doing a great job at only 180k please follow the details and save yourself a seat mom's gather is here for you